Yeah. Okay, great. You all, so uh, glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Take an inhale and an exhale. And we'll take two more. So as you take these breaths in, you're just scanning your body to see what kind of practice you need today. Inhale up and exhale, bring your hands to your thighs. We're gonna drop a shoulder and a little rotation to wake up that back. And inhale and exhale, waking up the inner thighs, waking up the knees. One more time, right? And one more time, left. And then we're gonna roll up the spine in flexion and in extension. Inhale and exhale. So it's your Halloween cat and then your sassy cat. We're gonna do that two more times, waking up that back. Inhale and exhale. This time we're gonna roll all the way up. So sequence the spine till you're standing tall. And we'll take those feet together and take three more breaths this time of lifting the heels and waking up that body. Scapula, glide up and down the back. Healthy shoulder blades will glide and move. Inhale. And then exhale and take your Dynaband. We'll start with our Dynaband behind our back and take our bands equal distance on each side. And we're going to exhale and press out. The band is at the lower shoulder blade. Exhale, your knees are long, but soft. Three, every time you exhale, you can pull the belly in. Four, neck is long. Five, so we're gonna keep those shoulder blades down. Six, beautiful. Seven, elbows are lengthening. Eight, nine, we are controlled on the way out and the way in. 10, let's take five more. Exhale, five. Four, we'd like to feel some fatigue towards the final repetitions. Three, two, and one. Wonderful job. Take some circles for the shoulders just to get some mobility. And then take it in. Good morning. Take your arms overhead. Now we're gonna exhale. Hello, we're gonna exhale. We're starting with the bands. We did some warm up moves if you're just joining. Your arms are long, your wrists are neutral. So if you're not sure, look at them and you're trying to keep them in a pretty straight line like there's a piece of plywood there. Five, you're making sure they're not cocked wildly forward or back. Six, seven, neck is long. Eight and nine. Now when you're doing anything overhead, the low back tends to curve more inward. So you're going to make sure you have your ribs over your pelvis and then you're not standing like a gymnast. All right. So that usually means a little bit more ab tone below the ribs above the pubic bone. Take three more. Three. Exhale. Two. Uh-huh. Exhale. One. Good, and then let that go. This, this is gonna be our release here in between. It's like you have clothes on a line in the backyard and the wind's blowing and the sleeves are just flowing and hitting you. They can actually um, hit your back and hit your stomach. Four, three, just let go of tension. Two, and one, wonderful. This time we're gonna take the band in front of us like a Y. The wrists are long. Now from the shoulder joint, pull, until you hit your sternum with your band. Pull, good, exhale, pull, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Rear deltoid, 13, which is so important for posture, 14, and 15. Gorgeous. Let that go. These muscles, we're doing a rear deltoid and a little bit of rhomboid. Now, this one is the um, external rotators. Your wrists are flat. They're not cocked backwards or forward. Now, exhale. Open up your, el uh, your arms. Your elbows stay glued. This is external rotation. You usually see this in a lot of uh, rehab uh, exercises for the shoulder and we're doing it for prehab. 
uh, posterior deltoid, infraspinatus, teres minor, all those good muscles on the back of the shoulder that usually get overstretched and loose and they let our shoulders round forward. So we're doing these muscles for posture, healthy shoulders, and open, good. From the side, your ear is in line with your shoulder, not drifting forward. So let's take five more here. These are endurance muscles, four, so it's not gonna be a big, heavy feeling like when you do a squat, they're endurance muscles, two, and one. And then let that go. You can just shake it out, flip your palms, your left hand holds the bar, the band. <laughs> You're gonna push out right. Two, triceps, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let's do five more. This is the tricep. This is really important muscle uh, behind the arm. If you fall, this is the muscle that catches you when you put your arm out. All right, we're gonna let that go. And then let's do the other side. Inhale, and on your exhale, push. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, belly in, 10. All right, let's do five more. You're controlling it on the way back. And three, wrist is straight or neutral. Two, and one. And then let that go. Now this is gonna be a way we relieve muscles in the shoulders this time. Pretend like you're taking off a very large sweatshirt. The right arm can be in front this time, and the left arm can be in front this time. And switch it up two more. You're basically waking up those shoulders, relieving tension, getting some dynamic mobility. And one, wonderful job. Let's take the band in between our one foot. So I'm gonna use my right foot and dissect it. I'm gonna get some water. If you need some, grab some. Right foot and the palms are facing each other. We'll do a hammer curl position. And if you, of course, if you ever need to change your arm position, you can, but basically, your shoulders are down the back. Now, if you have a lighter band, you could do two feet to cut off some of this weight. But what we'll do is 20 reps. So the uh, idea is that we're fatigued at the final repetitions on this. Good job. Nine. And with the band, you can go a little higher than you can with a, a free weight and you still have tension. 11. Good. 12. Shoulders and chest are open. 13, you're making sure this doesn't happen. 14, 15, good, I like the control on the way back. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now we are going to switch feet. I'm gonna put my left foot in the middle. And this time it's an upright row. My uh, elbows are higher than my wrist. If you need more, you can grab more. We are gonna do 20, so we're pacing that resistance. Four, so that we feel fatigue at the final repetitions. Five, but we have good form. Six, neck is soft. Seven, good. You can always play around with how you're holding. Eight, your straps, good, Catherine. Nine, good, Betty. 10, keep going. 11, mm -hmm. 12, strong shoulders, 13, biceps are helping, 14, 15, we have five more, you're doing great, exhale, ear in line with the shoulder from the side of you, building muscles, building bone density, take two more, two, and one. Good, let it go. Uh, use your right hand and then step on the band with your right foot. This is gonna be a one arm full front, uh, el deltoid raise. So one, two. Now we're only gonna do 10 front. So if you feel like you need more tension, you can do that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. Now we're gonna take more slack here, go out. One, two, mm -hmm. eight, nine deltoids, 10. All right, let's switch it up. That was great. We're doing 10 and 10. Switch your feet. The left foot has it. The left arm's going to bring it forward. Deltoid raise. Your elbow is pretty long here, but you're not letting it lock backwards. You might have a little L, uh, an image of a marshmallows in there. Five, your neck is long like a swan. Six, your deltoid is active. Seven, but not your upper trapezius. Eight, your abs have a little tone as you stabilize and you're making sure you don't lean back. Now, give yourself just a little bit of slack. Exhale. If you look sideways, your hand is going out to the side, but you still see your hand in your peripheral. You're not letting that arm get behind you with that weight. Five, you're resisting. Six, you might be able to go a half an inch higher than you think you can. Seven, feel that tone helping your body. Eight, ribs stay over the pelvis. Nine, and 10. That was wonderful. Take a little um, breather. Let your arms go wide. Now you're going to take a dynamic stretch and I'll turn to the side so you can see. If that feels like you can't go back safely, you can widen your grip and go uh, behind you and in front of you. My humerus is moving in that glenoid fossa. My scapula are moving up and down as healthy scapula do. If I look at my wrist, they're neutral. We're making sure they're not backwards forward. They're just in a basically a, a flat line, pretty flat line. I'm just holding on enough that I can get some stretching. I don't need to death grip the band. Inhale. And we're gonna take a three-way doorway stretch with our band, so I'm gonna choke up on it a little bit. Find a place that's like a Y, a field goal post. It's almost like you've walked through a door jam and your hands are caught on the, the sides of the door jam and your body's going through. Notice how I'm not letting the head poke forward when I do this stretch. I've got my ear over the shoulder from the side view. Practicing good posture so when I'm driving the car or working at the desk, it's easier to maintain. Inhale. Now we're going to get some blood flow there. Just give a little blood flow. We're doing two more of those three-way stretches. So find another angle that works for you and just change it up. Any angle is fine. Yeah, the main thing is your chest muscles have three different attachments. So we're getting at least three stretches back here because the chest muscles often get drawn tight and then we start looking like a question mark, rounded forward. Exhale, let that go. Another angle will do, just find another angle. So I'm gonna go a little higher as if my hands were higher on the door jam and let the band be behind you. So I'll just show you the arms are behind me if I can. You're really making sure the shoulder doesn't poke forward. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Let that go. Terrific. Let's get rid of the bands for a bit and grab a heavier weight. I'm going to grab a sip of water if you need one too. Um, so I have a nine. You could be anywhere from three to ten. And we're going to put our athletic knees on. Knees are soft and athletic. Look at how back is long as you hinge. So you don't look like a Halloween cat here. You have support in your uh, hip flexion. You're gonna row, upright row, exhale. It's almost like how you start a lawnmower. You can have that as your image. Make sure your upper back is long. You might have to stick your booty up a little bit more. And you might be able to get your upper back a little long. Yeah, a little longer. That helped. What, what you just did helped. That was it. So you can see I'm trying to have a long back and not round at all. So usually you can do that by lifting up your sit bone or kind of sticking your sternum up a little bit. 
All right, I see. I like it. You got it. That looks really good. Five, four, mm -hmm. three, two. Now one, I'm going to unhinge at the hip, so I'm still in a long line. I'm not rounded. That's great. And then face the palms. Now um, this could be this grip supinated or exactly, or you know it. You can do, uh, that was good, Michelle. You can do hammer grip. So if you're not sure, I'll do a couple each way. And neither way's hurting my wrist or elbows or thumbs, but if you have something that needs some care, do the other grip. Right. Good. Wrists are flat. If you're not sure, take a look and take a picture of that feeling inside your body. You want to know how that feels so that if you don't look, you still have a sense of what a flat wrist looks like. What I commonly see is that there's an accidental kind of dip. We don't want to do that. We want to have some we want to have some tone in those wrists so the weight's not pulling your wrist back. Five. And there is merit to having some of this grip strength, isn't there, when you open jars? Three. Two. Good. And one. Now, that was great. You're going to take the weight down, flip it. I'm going to change the stance just a little bit more athletic, knee soft. A little wider in other words exhale and row it's almost like you're pulling up a big zipper three like a big snowsuit zipper four five shoulders and biceps six seven that looks great eight nine ten 11, great, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, let's get rid of those. We're going to sneak in a few stretches before we grab our other weights. And always, as always, water when you need it. Take your Right foot over your left, left arm down, and add a little rotation to give some of your personal flavor to these stretches. This is a great stretch, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Laterally flexing the spine, stretching the intercostals, stretching the QL of the back, that nemesis back muscle, and back pain, and the shoulder. Five, four, it's stretching the lat as well. Three. Two, inhale up, exhale, cross that other foot, hand down, arm up and over. And if you want to add a little rotation to make it more personal to you, all these angles are probably going to be beneficial. It's just that you may find some angles that really get you where you're tight. Breathe into that rib cage. One trick into breathing into that rib cage is to direct the nostrils in that direction and it'll help you expand. From the inside out, you feel the intercostals open up. Take another inhale. And then an exhale. This time, the hands are going to go behind and open up. Five. Four. This is a great one you can do just when you're standing in line somewhere to buy something. Two. You can do it anywhere. Inhale. And then exhale. We're going to grab our small weights now. So we'll, I'll take a five pound. You could take anywhere from two to six, probably. Athletic stance. Now on the exhale, pull up to about a T. Yes, and then down. Good. Just waiting for us all to get together. Wrist or long, and then down. Exhale. And just to be conservative, you see I'm taking the arms up to about shoulder height, but I'm not lifting them higher. I don't, I'm not going to, um, I don't need to risk putting extra 
pressure on that supraspinatus tendon where the acromial process hits the humeral head. So basically what I'm doing is just keeping it in a really high benefit, really low risk range of motion. The wrists are flat or straight. The hands are still in my peripheral. I'm not letting the arms drift behind me with that weight. So it's called your scapular plane. The, the arms are just slightly ahead of your body with a weight here. All right, let's do one more for the shoulders. Exhale. Now with the shoulders or weights down, you can take some mobility circles and keeping that athletic stance, your hands can be more front now. With your exhale, pull to that same, I'll turn about that same height. Good, you see I'm not going higher than my shoulder. I've got my athletic stance on, so I've got some, my knees soft, my feet wider than my um, hips, a little probably around shoulder height, maybe a hair uh, wider. Wrists are long, exhale. And look how soft the neck can be, even though you're working the shoulders. Your neck does not have to be grippy or tight. And then the jaw. It's easy to tighten the jaw muscles, the masseter. See if you can just do the weight training without any clenching in your jaw. Uh, one little trick is you can open the mouth just slightly, the lips gently spread apart just a little bit, and that helps relax the jaw. All right, two more. One more, getting strong in the shoulders. Once your hands are low, take some shoulder movements. Three, two, one. Now remember that athletic stance, this is rear deltoid, and the back was long and the knees were bent, but I'm not rounded like a cat, I'm in a long spine. Open up the deltoids, this is rear deltoid. These muscles are really important to get strong because they get overstretched and loose in most of us because our arms are forward and our eyes are forward and we do tasks that are forward. So we really want to strengthen these muscles so that the shoulders have an easier time staying down and back as opposed to rolling forward. So make it a little um, pause at the top so the weight isn't just forcing you down to the gravity. You're, you're controlled. Yeah, I like those slap wrists. Good, your neck is soft. You see how there's no wrinkle or tension in the neck? All right, let's take three more. This one's really important for posture. Three, and to balance out the shoulders. A lot of times the front of the shoulders and chest are stronger than the back body. We want the back body strong. And one. Take a breather and let that. Let's do another shoulder exercise and then take a stretch. Athletic stance. One hand on the shelf, one hand on the shelf. Now inhale, exhale, push up and bend. This can also be done sitting in a chair with a back. Exhale, push. We're not using such a heavy weight, so we'll be fine standing, but you can always do it in a chair if you need. Four, good. And you see I have my weight ahead of me. Five, I'm not taking that behind my head. When I lift, six, it's still in my peripheral frontal vision. The weight's not drifting behind me. So when I go up, see yeah, how it doesn't go behind me. I'm going to just work that scapular plane safely to my advantage to get strong without introducing unnecessary risk. Exhale. When the arms are up, sit here or in life, you want to make sure that the ribs are per pulled down with your abs. You're not doing this extra gymnast low back, inward curve, lordosis, two, to um, by accident, and one. Now we are gonna lower the weight for a moment so you can take those out of the way and grab a sip, of course, if you need to. You don't like this stretch, it's one of my favorites. The elbow is uh, behind you, like you're patting yourself on the back. The left hand, it's going to work its way up. And if you can't reach it, don't worry, use your Donna band. But this shoulder, it's really important that it's open. You don't want it poking forward. All right, if you want to make it a little bit more of a balance, I'm really like doing a one footed balance challenge with this posture. Let's hold 20 more. Two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and relax. If you want to take your arms swinging like clothes drying in the wind on the clothesline, you can. And let's take the other side. Left arm, pat yourself on the back. You can help it out. Right arm. Now, that could be your pose. If you want to take a balance pose, you can. Good, all right and 20. Remember, with your arms overhead, so your low back is at risk for getting more curved. Two, so you're going to keep the ribs over. Three, head pulls back. Four, jawline parallel to the floor. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 19, inhale, and then exhale, take that arm sway. Very good, five, four, three, two, one. And then we're gonna take a stretch that looks like this. Right arm underneath, elbows crossed maybe, palms together. Now, if that doesn't work out, just hug, and that'll be a good stretch as well, okay? Otherwise, this is an option. If you wanna sit down and add some squat training, you can. If you want to add one leg of squat training, see how I keep my left leg absolutely still. I'm not letting that knee collapse inward. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unwind. And then take a little breather. Good. Sometimes uh, all this, these, uh, a lot of joints were locked up then, seven joints, I think. So you want to just let that blood flow come back. Other side, arm under. Now either hug yourself or wrap, even your palms. Sit down. That's a leg strengthener. Knees in line with your second toe. Or wrap one foot. Now it's one legged squat, basically. 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Inhale, exhale, come down. Very good. We're going to meet on the floor. If you need a sip, take a sip. Meet on the floor. You may have your roller handy and your weights handy because we're going to do a little bit of a chest uh, routine here. When you're lying down, You can take your heavier weights or your lighter weights. We're gonna do a chest press. So I have the nines, for example, your elbows are wide, 90 degrees. Your feet are on the floor so that your low back has more support. Pull your ribs down. Now, if your low back still curves, you can always put a pillow underneath your head gently. On your exhale, push up. You can even tap the weight at the top. Inhale. Now your wrists are long. Look at them if you're not sure and learn. One thing about free weights is it teaches you how to put your body uh, in space so you can develop a more kinesthetic awareness. Uh, there's nothing wrong with machines, but machines kind of do that for you so you don't have to add that little, feel this little element, how we have to control it. That's the one of the benefits of free weights. Exhale, as you're learning that balance and control, and it sort of happens without a lot of efforting because you have to do it or you would drop the weight, right? Or the arms would be flimsy like spaghetti noodles. So it's an inhale and an exhale. Now we're gonna add in a belly pulling in cue. So exhale, pull your belly in. Inhale, open up the arms. Now you can also add the pelvic floor cue. So it's like you're trying to control the bladder muscles, like you have to use the restroom at the end of a movie and you don't want to miss the last scene. So you use those bladder control muscles. That's the pelvic floor. Exhale, pull the pelvic floor inward and up. 
and exhale, pull the belly in. All right, arms are getting tired. That's our lecture. We are on 108 of these. Let's do three more. Inhale, and exhale, two. Inhale, and exhale, one. Now we're gonna lower these with control. And let's take a full body stretch overhead. And when you do this, act like you're climbing a ladder. Pull one arm longer, pull the other arm longer, shift one leg longer. And you see it all, there's no knee bending here. This is all from the muscle here, the QL, from the rib to the pelvis for, yeah. One side sometimes is tighter and you can kind of work it out here too. And one, now you may grab your lighter weights for this. This is called a chest fly. You can grab your lighter weights if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna keep the same one, but somewhere between three and 10 ought to be fine, or two and 10. You open up your arms. Now open up, inhale, and exhale. If you're hypermobile, you really wanna make sure your wrists aren't going backwards here or that your elbows aren't going backwards here. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Open up. So I'm basically just going to hit that upper arm to make sure I'm showing a, a conservative form. Open. In this pose, your wrists are not hitting the floor. That means your, your, some, your elbows have gone too uh, straight. I want to make sure we don't hyperextend if you're hypermobile. All right. Let's take four. It's almost like you're hugging a tree in front of you. Exhale, three. Inhale, good, your wrists are strong. Exhale, two. Inhale, and exhale, one. Good, lower the weights down. Nice, take a full body stretch, shift through your arms, shift through your legs. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two. Now you can take a lighter weight or if you have your heavier one, you can also just take one. Um, and it's called skull crusher, but look how I keep my elbow up in the air. So what I did is just take one weight and hold it horizontal. I could have done two weights. I'm just gonna show you because I'd rather be uh, conservative since the weight's heading towards our head. Your elbow is bending, but it's up in the air the whole time. You could do this with two smaller weights as well. Inhale, your triceps. Uh, you can see I really like to do triceps in our classes. They tend to get neglected. And if you think about it, uh, life has become so automated that it's really hard to keep normal muscle tone in your body, upper body, unless you go after it and do something. So even our um, car windows, they used to be a roll-up, although my truck still is a roll-up window. But now most of the time you just push a button. So we have to go after those arm muscles or they get atrophy and the bones get light and weak. Take two more. Inhale and take one more. Good. That one has a nickname of skull crusher. You can tell why. Now we're going to take a shoulder and a hip stretch. So take your right knee across. Your left hand can hold on to that hip. Take your right arm out. It's like you're um, making a tear. Why? Look that way towards the hand. Although when you stretch, if you want to shut your eyes, you can. But your neck is rotated that way. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, inhale, and exhale. That one feels so good, it's hard to come out of it because it's so enjoyable. Right leg long, left knee over, right hand on that thigh. Now, the waist is really long here. Left arm out like a T or a Y. And relax. Come back in, so good. 
And you can take your hands to the knees real lightly. You don't want to have uh, too much external pressure on your knees. And then go the other way. Good. Just a light touch, but you can spin them as big as you feel good. That was so good. We are going to do an abdominal exercise. So let's, uh, if you need a sip, grab a sip. We're going to do a plank, but with the plank, we're going to put the roller underneath our shin as an option. So if you have a roller, you can put the roller underneath your shin. And I'm going to move my weights so they're not in the way. It's nice to have a clean space when you're doing exercises so you don't hurt yourself from something silly like not putting a weight up. All right, we're going to put on our elbows down on the mat. If you have more sensitive bones here, you can double up your mat. Send out your legs and either hold or if you would like to add on, pull your knees under. And you could do this without a roller if you just pull the right knee under and then the left. This is called inchworm. We're going to exhale and every now and then have to adjust my roller. Now, if your shin bone, your tibia is sensitive, internally rotate your legs so that your toes are pointing towards each other and that'll let you roll out the tibialis anterior muscle. If it's still just uncomfortable, just stay put. This is for you. You make the class yours. Three, good, I like it. Two, ribs pulling in, making sure the head isn't dropping. One, now rest any way you want to. I'm gonna use our rest just to adjust my mat, but you can take a child's pose. Terrific. Now we're gonna change it up. So if you have a roller and you'd like to use it, you're gonna, I'm gonna put my mat up long so you can see me. We're gonna do pike. With pike, your legs are on the roller, inchline rotated a little, lift up your hips, and lower. Now, if you don't want to keep going, if you don't want to use your roller, you can lift your hips anyway and go back down to plank. And lift, knees are long. So the last one, the knees were bent. This one, the knees are long. Now, every now and then you have to adjust your roller. That's fine. Four. Exhale, three. I can feel my abs here. Two, and shoulder blade stabilize. Your shoulders are flat on the back. You're not collapsed in the upper back. Inhale, one, and then I'm going to rest in child pose. You can rest however you want to. Very good. All right. We are going to um, take one called with the obliques. It's a uh, moguls. Grab water anytime you need. Your, left, your knees are going to go to your left side and then back into your plank. And then your knees are going to go to your right side and back into your plank. Left. And right, left, and right. Four more, four, three, two, and one. Perfect, aren't those effective? Those are really good. The, another one we're gonna do is four points of light. So watch me on this and you can follow. So it's pull your knees in, Turn left, turn center, turn right, turn center, go back. This is why we only do four of these. Are you ready? Pull in, turn left, turn center, turn right, center, go back. Again, pull in, turn right, center, left, center, go back. Pull in, turn left, center, right, center, go back. Pull in, left, center, right, center, pull back. And child pose. Whew. Hold, five, four, three, two, and one. That was wonderful. Now we're gonna make the opposite side of our body strong with our posture exercises. This one is the swan. You can do this without a roller and you can do it with a roller. Now with the roller, your belly is down your arms are wide on the roller. Inhale. Now pull your belly in like there's a piece of ice underneath your belly button and button and roll up. And, and inhale up. And down. And down. Uh, 
All right, three more. And stay. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, when you're ready, just take a little breather. You can do this by bending your knees and the windshield wiping them, or if you want a child's pose, that's okay. Five, four, three. There is a passive stretch when you keep your arms out long and you let your head drop, right? That's so nice. We are going to add a little bit to this. Remember, you can do these on the floor and just hold steady as well. Otherwise, lift up. Shoulder blade down the back. This is one of my favorite roller exercises, actually. I love the roller with swans. Let your arm go back. Extension of the upper back is one of my favorite things to do. And to take your left arm back. It's so good to help complement the task of daily living and sports. Left activities that we do. Right, left. Lift up, good, that lat is strong. You see how that shoulder bleeds down the back. Inhale, good, next up, just a little bit. Now both arms on, lift yourself up and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Inhale, exhale, lower down. That was gorgeous, take a child pose. And you can use the roller with your child's pose if you put your arms in front and then drop, you can get a little extra chest and shoulder stretch. Five, four, three, two, and one. We are gonna do a side plank with the roller. You can put your ankles on the roller. I'm gonna stagger them right and left uh, in different places. So your elbow could be on the mat or if you like a little more cushion, Double that mat and whoo, come on up. All right, we're gonna hold for 15. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're in a toaster slot. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now keep your shoulders strong as you lower your hip. You never wanna get rid of any tone when you're transitioning. Transitions are probably even more important than the pose. So you're, you're active with your alignment cues when you transition. Uh, the oh, ankles are on. And come on up. And you know that's an analogy for life because usually it's when we're doing something silly that we hurt ourselves, like blow drying our hair or shaving. So you want to have your tone and your alignment cues on when you're doing a transitional task. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and lower that back down. All right, now let's do the head, the lats. Okay, let's do a lat opener. This is for posture and for back. So if you've had any back pain, grab sip of tea, or you have posture issues, this is a great one, or shoulder issues. So you're gonna take the roller long ways and the lat attachment where it twists underneath the underarm. And I'm using, see I'm just pushing my knees on the floor, using my body up and down. Now you can, Sometimes it helps if you lengthen and uh, bend that elbow. It may not. Sometimes you, I like to use my hand on my head. Not that I have any neck pain, but it just is a little bit of a support. But rolling back on the back of that twisted lat uh, near the armpit, or even that rear deltoid, because there's some attachments on the lateral border of the scapula. And so sometimes you can access those just by rolling back a bit. If you feel sensitivity, you've got something. Now, if you find an exquisite point of pain, like a trigger point, or maybe a nickel or a quarter size, you can rest on it. Usually 30 seconds to 90 seconds, breathing. And if so, I, I found a little spot that needed, uh, is a little more tender than the other ones. It wasn't just tight, it was sort of felt like a knot. So I'm just sitting on that spot. Actually, 
I'll say 30, to 90, 30 seconds to 90, but sometimes they go away as easily as 20. Like mine started going away, I don't actually build anymore. But if you need longer, take longer. Otherwise, we're going to roll. I might find another one if you find another one. Yeah, just basically rolling it out, finding the areas. If you find an exquisite point of pain, one that makes you think you, you it would take your breath away, or if you were standing, your knees would buckle. That's an exquisite point of pain. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's, before we do the other side, just take a side stretch. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. Wow, that feels good. Because do you remember we did Ardish and Dross in a stretch standing earlier? That feels so good. And actually, now I feel this, that I need to have my hips stretched because that feels tighter than my sides. Now, see how this one is before we do it. You feel that difference? And then let's do that side. Take your roller. Roll out that upper lat attachment here. I'm going to lean you back a little. Using your abs, your knees are on the floor, your hips are on the floor, and they kind of push you up and down. All right, now I've got my hand here. Some of you felt like you got more release when you bent and straightened, and that could be if your triceps tight, that may, may be what you need. All right, or rolling back. So I've actually got a little bit more on the shoulder than I do on the lat, but you're going to find your spot. All right, so let's just say you roll over this exquisite nickel dime quarter size and you have an exquisite point of pain. You can stay and breathe. Try to relax into it. It wouldn't be electric sensations or like you're sticking your finger in an electrical outlet. It should be, it, it will be painful or uncomfortable discomfort but it shouldn't feel like uh, surges of electricity. We want to hit muscles. Roughly around here shouldn't be too many nerve sensations that, we, that would uh, interfere with our experience. But find another one. If you found that you've got that one out, 30 to 90 seconds, you might find another exquisite point of pain. But remember, sometimes they can relieve sooner than that. That's a rule of thumb. All right, so if you find one, Ah, there's one, okay, sink, sink into that. Good, 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 good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Good. Now just to kind of get that area, put your feet on the floor, lift up. Now when you do these rolling, you you still you still get a little tone in some muscles. So it's not like you're getting a massage where you're totally relaxed. You have your hamstrings and glutes on here, and you're gonna roll back and forth over that upper back. Five, and you could do flexion. You can do extension. You can do roll out right. You can do roll out left. Now you can do elbows touch each other and then your upper back's in flexion as you roll out left. And as you roll out right. So we'll do five, four, three, two. Inhale. Oh, that's hard to come off because it feels so good. <laughs> Inhale and exhale. Okay, let's hit the IT because that one's so important if you have any knee pain or hip pain. And it's really hard to stretch well because it's a iliotibial band, it's not a muscle. So it actually responds better to rolling than stretching. That makes sense. We do need some tone in this uh, iliotibial band to keep the hip and the knee stable. 
But usually what happens is it gets really tight and creates an arthrogenic sensation in the hip or the knee laterally. So if you have those hip feeling, hip pain, knee pain, see if it feels better after this. And this would be a great little easy thing to help your hip and your knee go back and forth. Now, if you roll forward a little bit near where your front pocket is, you'll probably feel this front muscle called the tensor fascia lata. It's about three fingers wide. It runs from the top of the uh, iliac down here to the IT band, but it is a muscle. All right, breathing. Now, if you found a trigger spot, then if you need to just hold, rest on it. 30 seconds to 90. Yeah, you found one. Uh, that TFL one, whew, it really hurts because it gets over recruited as a as a hip flexor. It is a hip flexor, but it wasn't intended to be a primary one and it gets ooh, over recruited. So we're resting on it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, inhale. Now exhale. Let's just see. Sometimes when you just look at your legs or feel them, like my, I can actually see it in the camera, this left leg is lower and dropped and a little easier around the knee. If you touch here, it's a little easier, a little flowy. That's great news. Let's hit that other one. How many things in life do you get immediate gratification on? So this will be a great way to relieve tension. I've got my left foot on the floor because it helps me get some body weight off of this roller. And some people who roll often, they can take their foot off and do that. It's not about being tough though. You wanna make sure you can breathe and it's not creating tension elsewhere. Your jaw soft, roll out. You're never rolling out the knee, but you're rolling towards the knee. A few inches shy of the knee will be good. Then I'm gonna to roll towards that hip, that great trochanter, that big hip bone. And I'm gonna roll uh, deviating towards the floor a bit. That gets my TFL. And oh, found a spot on the TFL, relaxing into it. 30 seconds to 90. That a girl, great Michelle. Bye. <laughs> Bye, have a great day at work. I'll send you the link later after yesterday's as well. All right, hold. Relaxing, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, good, and then 1, good, that's great. Let's use this roller for a good lie back. Uh, by the way, you can just feel your leg, it should feel a little looser. Good, lie back, yep. Upper back, arms wide. This is another nice one um, to do with the roller. If you're not quite sure for them, this one's pretty easy, high benefit, low risk. Your head's on, your sacrum's on. Your arms are open up like a field goal post or some type of a Y. Palms face the sky. That means they're externally rotated, okay? You can even massage or just kind of wiggle left and right. And then just relax. If you'd like to add on, your feet can be towards each other and be a little bound angle, which is a um, pectineous stretch, your inner thigh that's anterior and uh, more superficial than the longer ones. So just relax. Relax your jaw, relax your eyes. Feel your scalp soften. Feel your chest and shoulders soften. This is a great stretch for posture to help open up the chest and shoulders and quickly get drawn forward with our task of daily living, our hobbies and our chores. Relax your hips. Let the breath drop low in the abdomen. Diaphragmatic breathing calms the nervous system. The eyes are soft so that you're creating an alpha brain state of calm. See how much more you can let go of any tension with the next three cycles of inhale and exhale. Take a moment to gently wiggle your fingers, 
And just slowly make your way up towards the seated position, facing the front of the room. If you would like to sit on your roller, you can. And we're gonna let the eyes soften or close. And just take three gentle breaths up. The first inhale will be one of appreciation towards yourself to get here today, for getting here today, for doing something good for your body, your mind, your spirit. Exhale any thoughts that don't serve you. Yeah. The next inhale will be setting an intention for your day. What kind of day do you wanna have? I'm gonna have a beautiful, joyous day full of wonder. Just see whatever day you're gonna have. Exhale any doubts that uh, you don't need. And inhale a sense of appreciation for this moment, for this breath. Let your hands come together. Catch the intention of the type of day you wanted to have in that little space between your palms. There's a little pocket. So mine was to have a joyous day full of wonder. Whatever you want to have is yours. Thumb touch your heart. So you're making a promise to yourself that whenever you need to find a little moment of self-care, you can take a few breaths, breathe diaphragmatically, close the eyes to come back to that state of equilibrium and calm that we have now that sense of whatever intention you wanted to have to create that kind of day you want. And whenever you're ready, allow your eyes to open, come back. May I have a beautiful, joyous day, and I am so glad that you joined me today. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.